Hey, hey the you blink, I'll cut your eyelids off. Don't you hey, don't blink. I got you. Let's go. And good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition here of the Mass Deal uh, Podcast right now. Uh, kick it off right now here with yours truly, host of On Deck, Charles Paraji Ritchie right now as we continue to count down along the way towards the 2021 NFL Draft right now. Uh, definitely uh, got some more uh, rumors and innuendos reports who the Steelers will select with their first pick, their first three picks more particular, as uh, we look at it right now uh, going on. Uh, plus, are we about to see the Steelers lose another offensive lineman? We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but right now, once again, if you guys want to follow me on social media, media you can definitely do so on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter at Mass Steel CGR for the Mass Steel Podcast and on Instagram at Mass Steel Nation. And then you can also check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Prodigy Richie right now as we look at the Steelers uh, draft or uh, right now. Who are the Steelers right now? I mean, when you look at their first couple of picks, I've uh, been mentioning this a lot of times. Uh, you got to seem to think right now it's got to be running back, uh, offensive lineman, uh, more or less a tackle. Uh, center, I'm not so sure. I'd probably say that'd be a long shot right about now. It's still been the elusive uh, quarterback. If they hardly have any luck in their franchise history, uh, their first three picks, which would be in the top 100, 24th, 55th, and 87th in those orders right there. Remember, they do have a compensatory pick at fourth round. Plus, we'll get some around the league news right now. And also, too, a former uh, pit player here, Aaron Donald, uh, supposedly accused of harming a guy at a nightclub last uh, week or a few weeks ago. As uh, we looked at, it. and uh, more with the Vincent uh, Spriggs, who thought he was assaulted by Aaron Donald, which he ends, ends up turning out to be the instigator in a Southern bar in Pittsburgh at a club. And the uh, Boom Boom Room, I suppose, is what it was called. Uh, we'll get to that in just a moment, but also, too, uh, congratulations to Alex Smith right now, calling it a landmark career right now uh, in the NFL right now. A uh, guy who had overcome so much uh, leg surgeries. Uh, I, I can't even imagine what his life had to be going through hell and back. Really think about it. I mean, this guy, what well, he's done for everything. I mean, to even get back to this point, just to even live a life, be a family man, a father, a husband. And still be able to get another opportunity to play football in this day and age. He is such a lucky man and uh, very blessed and thankful. And listen, I, I know things kind of ended a little ugly on the w way out ever since he was interviewed by the GQ magazine. And I uh, really felt uh, very confident about how he helped contribute to the Washington football team, taking them to the playoffs. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was still a great story just to even be in that position. I mean, this guy almost lost his life after 17 leg surgeries. I think it was 17, 18, somewhere along that line. But, I mean, this guy to do what he's did, uh, folks, miracle of God right there, as I always said. Like I said about Tyson Fury back in 2020 uh, when he beat Deontay Wilder after being nearly 400 pounds and was uh, literally poor at one point and broke after having to forfeit his title from a few years ago do some performance-enhancing drugs, I believe it was. But he was able to overcome a lot of stuff right there. I think the cocaine addiction, I think, was one of them. But, I mean, you look at the story right there, how sometimes when you hit rock bottom and you have to just rework your way back up. And I'm not saying this was rock bottom for Alex Smith, but at the end of the day, too, I mean, how many of you guys were really thinking that he was going to be playing beyond this season? To be honest here, I really felt like, so he should have just called it a career immediately after the season. So one thing about Alex Smith, when you look at him at the end of the day, when he was going out there on that field, you'd be hearing a lot of reports uh, at the end, uh, like when he's playing these games, blood clots in his legs. And you just don't know what this guy has been through. I mean, can, can, can you just imagine that right now? I mean, you're still rolling the dice right now. I mean, try to get 
get out of this game in one piece and still make a career beyond the game of football. But yet, I mean, it's a lot of determination, a lot of grit right here. I mean, then you also think right now, Joe Burrow right now with the Bengals, already in his first year, he gets his leg broken. And I would assume he'll be okay and back on track. We'll see how he does uh, physically and mentally, emotionally coming back from this. But then Dak Prescott, too, a guy who got hurt last year as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. And I think it was a game against the Giants, I want to say. I'm not sure which one. I'm not sure it was the Giants. But either way, broke his leg right there. He was playing on a franchise tag. And uh, literally, some people saw like the bone, a little piece of the bone uh, when he got uh, sacked or brought down. And he still gets a big payday at the end of the day right now with Jerry Jones. Uh, he's able to win that battle big time right there after being uh, after play after playing hardball with Jerry Jones or just play keep his poker face on. Jerry Jones is not the easiest guy to get money out of, especially when you think of all the endorsements he has to deal with that organization. But I mean, they got their man right now, and we'll see how he does coming back off this. But I got to tell you, I think he's got to be in a whole better world right now. I mean, where he is mentally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, kudos to him once again. And, we, and we'll get to the Steelers highlights in just a moment, but I remember another thing, too. I was capturing this on my on-deck show uh, last night, as I'm going to do that on a Saturday or Sunday night. I'm probably going to lean more towards a Saturday night, just to give everyone a heads up. I know I've been talking about 9 o'clock on Sunday nights, so I definitely will uh, keep you guys more informed on that. But, I mean, you got pro football talk. I mean, right now, a lot of players around the league right now, I mean, choosing not to uh, volunteer for off-season workouts. And one of the teams happens to be on there is the Steelers, I mean, in that regard. I mean, you look at everyone around this league right now, I mean, who's, I mean, more concerned with uh, coming back in a safe environment through COVID but also, too, not only that, too, I think it's bigger than COVID if, you, if we continue to look at this thing a little harder. And it's more so about the power struggle that the players continue to get with the executives for a lot of years. They still feel like they're just forcing their way onto them, that if we have the final say, do what we got to say, or if not, we'll find someone cheaper to try and replace you. Save a little bit. I mean, you can only get away with that and be so sly with that for so long. And I, I really think right now, I mean, the players right now, they're trying to fight for a lot more integrity, if you ask me. And I, I just, I'm not sure, I mean, like, what kind of message are you sending to, like, younger players who are trying to get in this game, trying to adapt at the pro level? But at the same time, too, what do you do? I mean, I mean, what's the method here? I mean, is this gonna this new style training? I mean, not having to do virtual workouts or just like at team facilities. More importantly, is this gonna lead to more injuries during the season than what we normally see? More sloppy play. I mean, and just more importantly, rhythm. I mean, how are you going to do, I mean, are you going to, is it going to come down to the point where you're going to see coaches upload uh, game plans? I mean, they're going to go, like, say, like, on a Facebook messenger and, like, uh, give them, like, the the playbook that they want them to be prepared for this season. I mean, are we going to see guys in chat rooms trying to prepare while they're working out, doing their workouts, like say, I don't know, at an LA Fitness, uh, Planet Fitness, Export Fitness, or just being with their personal trainer to make sure they're in a good spot me mentally and physically. I mean, that's the thing. And you better believe too, like I, like uh, Mike Florio of the Pro Football Talk was saying too, Tom Brady and the Bucks right now with Bruce Arians, 
uh, given him that uh, taste he's been waiting for as a coach and all the talent that he's brought along with him, like an Antonio Brown, Leonard for that. You got to believe right now that they got that taste in them and they're ready to take on all comers and they're going to try and find the edge versus anyone that comes to oppose them. Because believe you me, a guy like TB12, Tom Brady, the GOAT, and yes, I have said it. Uh, and I, I, I do not apologize for that. He is the greatest of all time. I don't care uh, skill-wise, but winner, win big, biggest moments, that is the guy. And, I mean, you've seen Tom Brady kind of little by little take it easy a little bit. Saw him with his little boat celebration with his team at the Super Bowl parade, the boat parade. Also in the Lombardi Trophy, drunk across. But still, I mean, at the same time, too, he's earned that, that right. Seven Super Bowls, shoot. I mean, you're, you're on a whole other level that none of us will be in. So let's go ahead and get into the Steelers uh, news right now. We'll get into more stuff. But right now, uh, according to Dale Lally of DK Pittsburgh Sports, uh, he was a uh, citing uh, source in Rapport of NFL Network. Uh, he was saying that the Ravens are looking to move on from their tackle, Orlando Brown. In order for the Steelers to receive a potential compensatory pick, if the Villanueva is to sign uh, with Baltimore, he would have to sign his deal by April 27th, next Tuesday. Okay, and I'm not sure if that falls in the category where he had to do it by New York time, 4 o'clock Eastern. I would imagine that would be the deadline for him to do that by. But I, I think that would definitely be an eye-opener. And listen, I know Villanueva, he's taken his crap, I mean, basically the last few years I mean, some controversial moments. I mean, you look at him right there. I mean, like a back in Chicago, right when this whole, when President Trump at the time created a big shit storm about athletes not standing for the anthem, wouldn't you like to see them lose their job over it or just to like be fired over it? And that's just not what you do right here. And to be honest, it would definitely put people on the uproar a year later after Raquel Kaepernick was trying to send a message across the world in society, trying to be a social justice hero, if you really think about it, and just really a, a, a representative in communities. I mean, this guy right now, he really feels strongly about that, wants to be one of the athletes to make a huge difference. We're seeing a lot in sports nowadays. But, I mean, the only problem is you got to just look at right now, listen, it's not Catholic's fault. A lot of it is the political leaders of this country. And the Asha, like I always say, it is more than just a game these days. And we'll, we'll find out how, I mean, this continues to work itself out. But I mean, for right now, I, I'm looking at this right now, and I think a guy like uh, Kaepernick I mean, wants to keep his feet plant firm, uh, be strong with this. And he just doesn't want to be looked at as a pushover, trying to help people. I mean, he's a guy who's won a, a being blackballed in all the league. So as an opportunity to come back. But all the way of it, too. I mean, there was also another thing, too, at the support of the season. I think with a, a sergeant in the Army, well, I think it was someone else, Marquise Ponce, who got confused with someone, I mean, with a cop he was trying to support, I mean, at the start of the regular season, you know, and trying to support stuff for Black Lives Matter. Listen, I, I think right now when you look at the stuff, I mean, it's important that they build the right kind of message not being looked like they're being stepped on. And, and I think right now, I mean, it is a better uh, spot than what we've seen here. 
And just to see how this uh, continues to pick up, we shall find out. But I, I think on the waiver right now, I mean, listen, I know he's been having struggles like, uh, I mean, the last few years on the field a little bit. I mean, we've been seeing a little bit of a guy right now who's been lingering around and his play has been a little bit, I mean, questionable. I mean, he's made two Pro Bowls under Mike Munchak. Don't get me wrong. Back to back in 2017 and 2018. But when you look at everything, too, I mean, you look at this guy right here who's played at least over 6,000 snaps with the Steelers in six seasons. And uh, he was able to, like, uh, play, I mean, for at least 100% of his snaps in four seasons. Listen, I, I got to consider this guy a success, to be honest with you. I mean, he did a very good job of helping keep Ben Rosberger on his feet, minimizing the sacks, I, I feel. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, Ben Rosberger, too, I mean, he's been trying to stay a lot more healthier. And, and you can argue the run game definitely the last two years has definitely been immensely uh, suffering here. But I mean, when you look at like Ben Sachs started to come, started to go down, it happened around the time when Villanueva was part of this offensive line. Ben Rosper was still getting sacked in the neighborhood of over 30 sacks last back in 2014. At the end of the day, I feel like Villanueva did a huge, significant job helping it. And yes, the running game. I mean, the guy who's Ben, six foot nine, 320 pounds, Olive Army, Volnaweva. This guy has uh, paid his dues, in my opinion. And if he's able to go to the Ravens, I mean, within the division as an unrestricted free agent, I'm going to go back for this guy. I know he's had a bad season, but any moves within the division, you always want to keep an extra eye open for. I mean, look at Mike Hilton, I mean, with the Bengals this year. That is going to be the most interesting one, I would think. And, I mean, that, that's the one I'm a little hesitant for. How much will the Steelers uh, pay for that if they do by any chance? I mean, when they go face off in the AFC North, I mean, the AFC North uh, twice a year this season. That's going to be my high concern right there. And I would like to think right now, I mean, you got to be game down for that. I mean, will, will, the, will we help the Bengals turn the tide and make it uh, competitive once again, like we last seen back in 2015? I mean, listen, ever since Andy Dalton's, I mean, come over to the Bengals, I mean, w when you think about it, and his nine seasons with the Bengals right there, I mean, everything, he never swept the Steelers but he was able to split with them at least only three times when he was there. Three times. I mean, they've been pretty much, they've been owned since he's got to the Bengals. I mean, the only time I think where he's really hurt the Steelers back in 2012 in week 16 were officially eliminated Steelers uh, wildcard playoff chances. They were already out of the division right there. You saw the Ravens go on to win uh, a Super Bowl. Uh, Ray Lewis is second and final. Bo Flacco's first. And that, that's another thing, too, by the way, too. Uh, you know, Bob Pompiani was uh, talking with uh, Cook and Joe this morning at 93.7. The fans usually does it on Mondays, usually for like uh, the first couple hours or sometimes the entire show with Cook and Joe on Mondays. And just uh, mentioning, I mean, yeah, he, he didn't have – I mean, a lot of, like, uh, passing stats, but the way he could throw the deep ball. I mean, Joe Flacco, at the end of the day, listen, he's earned the right, I mean, Super Bowl 47 to be Super Bowl MVP. I mean, this guy right here, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, his longest yard was, was in 2012. And I want to say probably could have been that game against the Broncos in Denver right there, divisional round. Remember, they only had one home game that in that playoff run. That was against Colts in the wild card round. Then they had to go on the road in Denver, New England, and win at a neutral site in New Orleans, 447. 
the same Super Bowl which saw the lights go out when they're owning the 49ers in that contest. Again, once again, uh, thank you for those of you who are uh, willing to join right now the Mass Deal Podcast. We, of course, yours truly, Charles Prodge Ritchie. If you guys want to, again, follow the Mass Steel Podcast on Twitter, you can definitely do so at Mass Steel CDR, at Mass Steel Nation on Instagram right now. Go ahead and uh, look at uh, more of it right now, too. Uh, and like I said, build a waiver. I want to hear your thoughts on this. What did you think of his time in Pittsburgh? Uh, do, do you think it was a disappointment? I mean, do, do you, I mean, would you consider, I mean, he, he's, he's ran his course right now. Would you like to see the guy come back? Or is it time to reshuffle the deck right now? And if he does leave, I mean, like how, the, how James Carr went over with the Cardinals last week, does that increase their odds of getting an offensive tackle? Or possibly a center, too. So you really got to start being a lot more careful right now with not shooting yourself in the foot and not being ready, I mean, for this 2021 team in the offseason right now, what you can. Also, too, it was uh, reported by uh, Teresa Barley of Steelers.com that the Steelers have officially signed Joshua Dodds to a one-year deal this afternoon, uh, which was done at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Dobbs, don't forget, he, remember, he was traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars after week one in 2019. Uh, he was then released by the Jaguars the following offseason prior to uh, the final weekend, that final weekend when they were trying to make their 53-man roster for 2020. He shortly then returned back to the Steelers and has been like on the quarterback uh, depth chart. So, I mean, that, that's, that's the official news we got right there on that. Uh, still no update, of course, on T.J. Watt, the most obvi- obvious one right now. I mean, a lot of people are expecting to probably be in the market of like around like $140 million as part of the top edge rusher being paid long term, I would feel. So, let's go ahead and uh, continue to move on right now uh, as we look at Let's get right into it right now. Fair or foul? First topic of fair or foul right now as uh, we uh, look at it. Uh, Tony Pauline, Pauline, a pro football uh, talk, he told the PM team, Andrew Filippoli and Chris Muller, who is the host of that show, usually text them uh, throughout the week from 1 to 5 p.m. Eastern on 937 The Fan on uh, Odyssey. Uh, which is a new uh, replacement for Radio.com app. And uh, basically what he was telling them right now, he believes the Steelers uh, right now have narrowed it down to uh, three players right now in the first round. Uh, Running back of Alabama, Najee Harris, Oklahoma State offensive tackle, Tevin Jenkins, and Alabama center, Landon Dickerson. Now, the thing is right now, I mean, he definitely do – does believe they are high on Harris right now. He's absolutely in the conversation. But he thinks right now they could get a good center in round two, maybe a Quinn Miners, who, who he knows that they like, that he doesn't know if he's going to be there at 55. So it's basically what is right now, according to Pauline. And I, I don't think I don't have a problem with that either way. But I definitely do believe right now, I mean, I'm going to be running into that slippery slope of running backs right now. I mean, coming up. I mean, do you, do you like risk? I mean, losing top quality. I mean, like I said, I mean, James Conner, I, I know he, he's shown flashes what he was able to do to not stay uh, physically healthy enough. But are, are we going to probably see guys like off the board? I mean, like uh, outside of Harris right now. I mean, like maybe like a Teddy Gainwell of uh, Memphis. I mean, this guy right here has uh, 2,222 yards in two seasons while playing there. I mean, he's projected to go between the first three rounds. And the only hope is right now, will he be available at a, I mean, 55th or 87th? So those are some things to think about right there. 
So uh, fair or foul that more than likely, don't go right take an offensive tackle, like say over running back. And I could, I could definitely see that being fair right now. I mean, you need to re this offensive line does need to be retooled either way, bottom line, period. You cannot have a situation where you're not going to have any uh, force to be there uh, in the running game to help out. I mean, I mean, just like when you're trying to protect a quarterback, I mean, why have good insurance right now? Not for the quarterback, but for the running back to have more confidence to, like, uh, make his impact. Felt. And that's where you got to look at, you got to be careful with uh, right there. Also, too, fair or foul, uh, quarterback. I mean, which they rarely uh, do. I mean, hardly ever uh, franchise uh, quarterbacks that are really considered rock stars. I mean, outside of Rob Woodson, maybe the only other one you had was uh, William Gay. But right now, Cam Sutton, just like Justin Lane, third round picks. Going in his fifth year right now, finally getting the nod at starter. Will that be someone they could pick up? I mean, in their first three picks. I'm going to say foul on that one for right now. I'm not ruling it out. Of course, you want to take the best available. But I would think if you're going to do anything defensively in those first three rounds, it's either going to be edge rusher or linebacker. Be honest, yeah. I mean, you can maybe argue strong safety would probably be a possibility. But, I mean, that's just what I'm seeing under my scope right now. So, I mean, those are uh, my thoughts right there. Not sure what you guys think on that. But, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to go uh, there for right now. And that's going to do it for this edition here of the Metal Steel Podcast. Once again, you guys can follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, at Project Richie. For the Metal Steel Podcast on Twitter, it is at Metal Steel CGR, and on Instagram at Metal Steel Nation. As always, Lydia, don't be trolling, be rolling. Here we go, Sears. Here we go. I got it.